Good morning. Let me acknowledge the Jinnaburra peoples of this country. I bring greetings from Cape York Peninsula. It has been a long road, but we now have a Prime Minister who has committed us to a referendum in less than 12 months. Our journey since the Uluru Statement from the Heart, as Linda said, had its origins way back in our history, back into our colonial days, when our people sought recognition. Sought a recognition that didn't come with the endeavour. Sought a recognition that didn't come with the first fleet in 1788 sought a recognition that didn't form part of the Australian Constitution at the time of Federation in 1901. We never did it. This country has never recognised the original peoples. Notwithstanding 65,000 years of human presence on the continent and its islands, there was never recognition in these last 250 years. We have been a nation committed to the idea that all that is important about the country happened in the last 250. We were a nation completely disconnected from its previous 60 millennia plus. Why this refusal? Were there not humans here before the coming of the white man? This is a recognition that we've had our heads in the sand about for almost two and a half centuries now. And the Prime Minister has said, we're going to go to a referendum to ask the Australian people to do the recognition that we've failed to do in two and a half centuries, to recognise the Indigenous peoples of Australia. From the very beginning, it was a hard question for the non-Indigenes. It was a very hard question. They had debates like the debates we've had over the last 10 years in the 1840s in Sydney. Even as the Wiradjuri were being wiped, wiped off the face of the earth nearly there were debates like this amongst your ancestors, many of them. And that debate went like this. Well, of course, the Aboriginal people must have some kind of claim to the land here, but if we're to do that, where does that leave us? It would delegitimise our presence in Australia. We would have to jump aboard the ships again and go back to England if we were to concede that the Indigenous peoples had rights to this land. So the debate was left with the resolution that recognition could not be afforded because it would delegitimise the European colonies in Australia. And that troubling idea that recognition of the original peoples would mean a denial of the colonial presence 
was not something that we ever had the leadership to resolve. We've never had a leadership to resolve the question of whether we could recognise the original peoples and still have a presence in Australia. We have never had a leadership to resolve that fundamental question, which one of the leading debaters of the time said, who declared against recognition, nevertheless said, but what means this whispering in our hearts? But what means this whispering in our hearts? We've never had a leadership to resolve the trouble in our soul. To work out how it is that we could recognise the indigenous and see ourselves as Australians still. We now have a leadership. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has been completely unequivocal that the question of recognition will be put to us, the Australian people, in soon time. And we're going to have to work out a way, work out a way to resolve how it is that we are Australians and yet we recognise the original Australians. How is it that we need not repudiate our heritage even as we recognise the original peoples? We are come to this question late in the day. Much suffering, much murder, much annihilation has occurred as long as we have failed to resolve this trouble. We are come to this question very late in the day and it's time for us to deal with it. I look at the country and I ask myself, who are the Australians? Well, obviously, Australia has as its foundation its 60,000-year-old heritage. That's the foundation of the country. What else could there be than the indigenous foundations to Australia? And yet we have denied it for so long Let's face up to the truth, staring us in the nose. The indigenous foundations of Australia are a truth. And the British system of law and government has built its institutions on those foundations. Our heritage comes from the United Kingdom in the first instance. Our language, the system of law and parliamentary government, all of these institutions come from Britain. And there is no use and no sense in repudiating that heritage. They endure for the benefit of all of us. But that is not all that is Australia. Tony Abbott was wrong when he said the most decisive event in Australian history was the arrival of the First Fleet. I said to him in a vigorous telephone call, <laughs> I said to him, you were asked by the National Museum what was the most decisive event in Australian history and you've nominated to the great offence of the original peoples of the country 26 January 1788. And I said, what about the crossing of the Torres 
land bridge by the original peoples some 65,000 years ago. And what about the ridding of the white Australia policy? But if you were born in England and you think that Heathrow gives you the feeling of coming home, then I suppose you would give the answer that he did. Let me say, our task is cut out for us. Our constitution is a very difficult door to get through. It requires a majority of votes in a majority of the states. That means we need a majority of the Australian people to vote in favour of the referendum. But not only that, we need a majority of the six states to be in favour of it as well. So Queensland, Western Australia and Tasmania need to join Victoria, New South Wales and South Australia in a majority vote. We have our work cut out here in Queensland. We need Queenslanders to recognise the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this state. Queensland is the home of two of the peoples who are in question here. Queensland is the home of the Torres Strait Islanders and the Aborigines. And we need a positive vote here in Queensland. There is no political leadership, which has been one of the problems that we have had to endure in this long campaign, the sheer absence of leadership. And here in Queensland in particular, we will need to, as Queenslanders, speak to our people. Speak to our people because there is an absence of leadership. One of the challenges we face is that the door needs to be opened by the 97%. Linda and I and our people cannot open the door. We're 3% of the vote. You are 97% of the vote. It falls to you and your people to open the door of constitutional recognition. If we're going to pass through that door, it is going to fall to you and your people. You're going to have to stand up for recognition. Linda can't do it. I can't do it. Senator Dodson can't do it. We speak for 3% of the country. We need you to own the responsibility for the success of this referendum. And can I say this? It is not just your political leaders who are important. You are more important. Because the next stage involves the Albanese government passing the referendum question in the parliament, which they will do. There is no question about that. It is the government's commitment and there is no parliamentary... There is no parliamentary objection to that question going forward. Where there is now the question is whether the Australian people will vote positively in favour of recognition. And this is where my optimism grows. Because I think the people are beyond the politicians. 
The people know what is at stake here and the people have a leadership inside themselves that is greater than their political leaders. And we have to mobilise. We have to grow the momentum. We have to grow the voices. We have to grow the commitment and the understanding and the crucial importance of this vote. What will become of Australia if the majority of Australians vote in favour of the voice, which I am sure that will be the case, but we fall short with one of the states or more voting against, not achieving a majority. That will not be a good result. And here in Queensland, we have a special responsibility. We have a special responsibility to aliven our people, aliven ordinary Australians to the importance of this vo voice and for us to not kick the can down the road once again. It was kicked down the road in 1770 and 1788 and 1901 and 1967 and 2001. We just kick the can down the road and leave it, leave the trouble to our grandchildren. People who leave the trouble to their grandchildren are not leaders. Who bequeath to future generations an unresolved and simple proposition. So, I'm telling you, it will be up to you. You represent the 97% and it'll fall upon you what you bequeath to our future generations. We only urge, we can only urge that we do the right thing. I want to say to Woodfordia for the many, many long years of affording us a voice to urge this agenda, I thank Bill and Woodfordia for their steadfast faith in this agenda. <clears throat> We're on the last lap. It's going to be a roller coaster of a ride. It is going to be an exuberant and troubling time. I say we are an unloved people. We are amongst all of the ethnic groups in Australia the most unloved. We have the fewest friends. We have been in the doorways and dining rooms of very few Australian households. Very few can say they've had us at their dinner tables. Very few can say they know any of us. And great causes need love. <laughs> We're going to have to summon up a love to vote yes. I know we are an unpopular people. I have known that since I was a small child. And yet my belief is that we can do this. Australians can imagine a future filled with love and it is that faith that I have that we're going to succeed with the referendum 
when the Prime Minister calls it. Thank you.